Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menagarza. I'm in my home in Fort Worth, Texas. Outside it's a hundred plus degrees and quite humid. A lot of people ask me, uh, why did you ever move to Texas? My friends in California, my family in California, they go, uh, my wife got a job here and we're here for another couple years. And then after that, we're headed back to cool, super cool <laughs> California. I just returned from a vacation in California about a month ago, and it was very nice here. A stereotypical, cool, pleasant Bay Area weather. And of course, I'm now back in Texas. Of course, it's stereotypically hot, humid uh, weather. Some people like this weather, and that's all they're used to, but I'm used to a little bit more pleasant, pleasant weather with a little bit of a cool breeze. If it's warm, it's but you still get that ocean breeze very very nice from the pacific ocean so today i'm going to be talking about my rockwood mini light 2205s travel trailer and uh, some of the issues i've been having lately i just wanted to you know inform you that uh rving is not uh, just uh you know everything's you know hunky dory super pleasant it's not nirvana <laughs> There are issues here and there. I want to talk about some of the recent issues I've been having. Uh, my last camping trip about a week ago, I was in uh, Lake Whitney uh, State Park. I go to all the state parks here in Texas. I've been to about a half a dozen, maybe uh, more like eight uh, state parks here in the state of Texas. And I really enjoy them because they're affordable. And typically on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday during the summer, they're not occupied. Weekends, uh, you got the folks taking the family uh, and, uh, you know, the weekend warriors and such. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, usually they're available, a lot of these spots, and you can just uh, reserve them and check them out. So uh, Lake Whitney State Park is only about 60 miles from my house, going down flat country roads. It's a simple little escape from my uh, mundane uh, Fort Worth uh, uh, existence so I decided to go down there my wife and I we had a great time doing some hikes they only had two uh, official uh, uh, you know hiking trails and each one was one and a half I think the other one was less than a mile and we enjoyed going hiking we also enjoyed going to the beach my wife enjoyed going swimming and of course we enjoyed hanging out together and just uh, checking out the wildflowers it's late in the season for the wildflowers but they still had quite a few very nice very nice Texas wildflowers. Very pleasant. So uh, on the way back, uh, I went over some railroad tracks, boom, 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 maybe going 35 uh, miles an hour, maybe 45, I don't remember. Uh, I was getting pretty close to home. And, uh, you know, as things heat up in Texas, sometimes the, the asphalt warps uh, near the, uh, the railroad tracks. And so it creates a little extra bump. So I noticed when I went over the bumps, I go, ah, oh, no. My uh, Rockwood Mini Light 2205S is poorly constructed. The cabinetry is, is modest, absolutely modest at best. They barely support any of the cabinets and drawers. It's not like a very nice, very nice uh, Coachman a Galleria Class B. You ever been in one of those? Now that's cabinetry. Now that's... Super, super, super nice. Dare to dream, huh? But the cabinetry in this, my uh, Rockwood Mini Light 2205S, just essentially fell apart again. It's not the first time. Last time I went camping, the drawers came out. And uh, this time around, I said, hey, I'm going to take out the uh, pots and pans and all, anything heavy in there. But they still, what? They still came out. <laughs> they flew out. And the ones on the right side are the pots and pans and other, you know, taller drawers and the ones on the left are a little bit thinner and not as tall so but those came out too and in fact the 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 rails what do you call it the the slides uh you know they just broke off bam and the back part of the rails were down the front parts were up and i had a hard time taking out the little you know drawers and such so i had to take them out put them on the floor and i said i was gonna fix them i was gonna fix them but uh, it got a little hot. Got a little hot in my trial trailer. 
So I said, hey, let's wait a while. But, at the, but they're on the floor. I'm waiting. I got my wood putty. I got some extra wood, some screws, and my tools, and my, you know, my square, you know, screwdrivers, square inch screwdrivers. I think they're called Roberts. I don't remember. And uh, et cetera, et cetera. And just we're going to fill up screwdrivers, and I'm going to fix it eventually, maybe uh, in about two weeks. Because next week, here in Fort Worth, it's even supposed to be worse. It's supposed to be like 110 just regular temperature, and you can imagine 107 when it's, uh, you know, with, with the humidity, what's going to be like. It's going to be, as we say in Espanol, muy, muy, muy caliente. Uh, some people ask me, why is it so expensive? Why is it so expensive in California? Well, you know, the tax structure is a little bit goofy in California, of course. And a lot of the, and they pay for a lot of the infrastructure with you know, with a lot of different taxes and stuff like that. But the main reason people like California, and I got spoiled. I must admit, I got spoiled living in California because of the Mediterranean climate. Cool ocean breezes. You go hiking like I was about a month, about uh, less than a month ago. I was uh, over there at Point Reyes National Seashore. I was walking, enjoying the wildflowers, just like Texas. They have wildflowers down there. And it was a cool ocean breeze. Even though it was 80, it was a cool ocean breeze, and it felt like 60, 65. Very, very nice. To the point where, you know, my wife and I said, hey, it's great to be back home <laughs> in this great weather. But I knew eventually I had to come back to Texas. And when I went camping at Mount, you know, Lake Whitney, not Mount Whitney, Lake Whitney, it was super, super, super hot. And today it's super, super hot. So you have to get used to those ideas. So I'm going to have to fix those cabinets, those drawers, and some of my... Uh, cabinet doors are a little wonky you know i just i lift them up a little bit of, hey stay there <laughs> so you get what you pay for uh, a person recently contacted me on my youtube page thanks for checking me you know contacting me via youtube and leaving your comments below and they said hey why are these uh flagstaff uh travel trailers so inexpensive and these rockwoods so inexpensive as compared to a a, a lance you know they're almost like you know you, you pay another 20 10, 20 grand just for the Lance. I say, well, Lance actually makes good cabinets. They actually spend the time making good cabinets. And, uh, you know, the, the, the walls are well supported. Everything's, a, you know, a premium product. They actually make it right. You know, Rockwood does a good job. It's a great job. I, uh, you know, I only paid 25 grand cash plop for my uh, 2022 Rockwood Mini Light 2205S from, you know, when I went to uh, Juana RV in Shipshawana, Indiana to pick it up, it was relatively inexpensive. I wish I could afford a Lance travel trailer. On another subject, in a comparison to Lance, Lance has uh, insulated double-walled uh, tanks. They're typically 45, 40-gallon tanks, and they usually have three of them. Some of the old units have 45, 45, 45, you know, fresh gray and black are all 45. And they're all insulated and four-season ready a plus and well supported. Uh, conversely, <laughs> I was fooled by the marketing material at Rockwood Flagstaff. 56 gallon freshwater tank in my Rockwood Mini Light 2205S. Uh, yeah, but you can't fill it up to go boondocking. The only reason you fill up your tanks with a lot of water and going down the road is because what? You're going boondocking. And if you're going boondocking, typically you're going to go down a little bit of a road that has a little bit of a bounce to it. And uh, those flimsy supports are known to have cracked, broken, fallen apart. And so the folks at Rock would say, hey, you can, uh, we, we sell you that, but it's just uh, pr primarily decorative. <laughs> uh, you know, you're only supposed to fill them up with maybe 20, 10, 20 gallons. And, and even that, just go down a short distance. We don't recommend it. So... They got some flimsy tanks. You can actually press on them and they move instead of thick, solid, you know, tanks like an upscale product like, you know, a Lance has super nice tanks, super well insulated, double walled, you know, nicely supported. But uh, the Rockwood, again, I had hoped. I go, hey, I bought this. I'm going to go do some boondocking. Very nice. Fill up the tanks to 50 gallons, go down that road, a little bit of a bounce and a jounce, and call it good, and I'll just stay out there and enjoy the desert, enjoy the countryside, go up those, you know, 
go to Eastern Sierra, have look at the, uh, enjoy the redwoods and stuff like that, the streams and stuff like that. But no, no, I was fooled. I am a fool. You can't fill up those tanks. You can't go down those bouncy roads because what? They're not well supported and you're not supposed to fill them up, according to the folks at Rockwood Flagstaff. So those are my two uh, gripes today. I just wanted to gripe a little bit, you know, sort of like do a, you know, complain. Hey, I apologize. This 71-year-old, I just turned 71 uh, recently, uh, does not like being limited in his RVing options. Again, I can't, you can imagine going down those little bumpy roads, or just a little bit of a bump, not a lot of a bump, and my drawers flying out again, and my water tanks, you know, the frames plop. And all of a sudden, I'm dragging my water tank down the road. <laughs> That'd be sad. So you, you actually have to get an off-road vehicle, something you know, high-quality, well-built. If you want to go off-roading, I do not recommend a Rockwood Mini Light product at this time, or a Flagstaff product at this time. There are specifically uh, off-roading options out there with better supports, better frames, better tank support, uh, you know, better everything. You know, it's better built. You know, it's like a tank compared to a, you know, <laughs> some budget option, okay? So uh, those are my issues that I'm having right now. Um, maybe in a couple of weeks I'll get the old, uh, I have already set and prepositioned my logistics for I have my plastic putty, some extra wood, my square head Roberts, I think they're called Roberts screwdrivers, and everything ready to uh, fix my cabinets and put them in place. And then I'm going to add some um, magnetic latches, uh, some strong ones, some wide ones, not some little ones, some wide ones. And hopefully, if I encounter another railroad track, bumpity, bumpity, bump, it doesn't I'm immediately fly out, pow. Okay. One thing I did previous to uh, going down the road, I took out all my pots and pans. Again, I took out all my pots and pans, anything heavy in the drawers, but they still, what? What do they still do? They still flew out. <laughs> again, you get what you pay for. You know, again, I would love to have that Coachman Galleria, Amish quality, high quality, solid wood cabinets in my Rockwood mini light but then again what would happen i would have to pay another 10 15 thousand bucks for the privilege but yeah so i hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at i just wanted to complain a bit give it a bit of a rant do you mind me giving a bit of a rant it's better i rant and you learn than say hey uh, i'm gonna get one of those rockwood mini lights and i'm gonna go do some off-roading i'm gonna go down that you know rutted road and uh, you know Go do some boondocking. I'm going to fill up my tank, my 56-gallon, you know, freshwater tank. I'm going to fill it to 50 gallons. Uh, don't. Don't. I'm warning you. Don't. Okay, so hope you're doing fantastic. I have other things I don't like about my Rockwood Mini Light, but I do like it quite a bit because it was affordable. It was $25,000 cash. On, you know, and I bought it, and I brought it down here to Fort Worth. And it's, and it's good as long as I'm going down a you know, comfortable, <laughs> flat <laughs> road. It's not, it's not an issue. But once I go down a little bit of a bump, hit a railroad track, uh, all bets are off. All bets are off. <laughs> From Fort Worth, Texas, hope you're doing fantastic. Outside, it's 100 plus degrees when you consider humidity. And it's super, super humid. Again, I'm not going to be working on my RV right now because it's, uh, it's a bit too humid and too hot at this time and i brought my little fan let me turn it on let me see ah 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 very nice so this is i usually carry this in my rv when i'm a little bit hot after a camp you know after going camping and doing a little bit of like turning my little fan again i hope you're doing fantastic again what did i say earlier i hope i i'm not being redundant don't forget to like subscribe and share uh, muchas muchas gracias and don't forget to ring the bell for future notificaciones for future notifications and please leave your kind and professional comments below abajo a lot of you live in kansas in oh, iowa 
and such. It's flat ground. You go from here to there and it's all flat. You're not going to encounter a lot of these issues that I'm talking about. But <clears throat> I wanted to go to the Eastern Sierra. I wanted to go back to the Rock, you know, Rockies. I wanted to go to northern New Mexico, you know, southern Colorado. I wanted to go here and there. But I have to now moderate my desires and say, hey, Jesus, you can do this. Simple, flat roads, country roads are pretty good, no issues. Once you go down anything rocky, rutted, uh, all bets are off. You may have to have a lot of things fixed, a lot of things repaired, and I'm the fix-it guy at this time until I'm not and I can't uh, fix it myself. I'll just send it somewhere and pay. Usually uh, at these RV dealerships, they have a little sign say, uh, we charge $175 an hour just for the privilege of fixing your RV. Thank you very much. You're just too generous. From Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Hope you're doing fantastic. Happy camping. I plan to do some camping pretty soon. I'm going to do some serious camping in a couple weeks. Gracias. After I fix my cabinets, of course. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.